In the heart of rural France, about 40 kilometers northeast of Paris, lies a small town called Le Plessis-Belleville. Today, fewer than 4,000 people call it home. But for decades, this quiet corner of Picardy was the beating heart of a revolution that would transform construction sites across the world. This is the story of Poclin, a company born from a farmer's ingenuity, built by a family's determination, and ultimately lost to the same global forces it helped create. On June 1, 1927, a local farmer named Georges Bataille signed papers creating a small business partnership. Bataille wasn't your typical farmer. He was mechanically gifted, endlessly curious, and frustrated by equipment that constantly broke down. His tractor, a temperamental Mercedes-Benz, seemed to need repairs more often than it actually worked. After years of fixing and tinkering, Bataille partnered with a local mechanic named Antoine Leger, and together they opened a repair shop. When Leger died just two years later, Bataille continued alone, moving the operation to a building across from his family's farm. By December 1930, the Atelier de Poclin was officially born. What started as a repair shop quickly evolved into a manufacturing operation. Bataille began building spreaders, tracked wagons for hauling sugar beets, three-wheeled carts, and flatbed trailers for transporting timber. In 1938, he developed a distinctive single front wheel trailer design known as the Tree Roo. By the time World War II erupted, the company employed around 50 workers and had secured contracts with the French military for water purification trailers and mobile power units. The war years were difficult, but Le Plessis Belleville emerged largely unscathed. By September 1944, with France liberated, Bataille's workers were already cleaning the workshops and preparing to rebuild. The post-war years brought both challenges and opportunities. Two of Georges Bataille's sons, Pierre and Jacques, joined the company after completing engineering degrees. They brought fresh ideas and academic training to complement their father's practical genius. But the true breakthrough came in 1948, when the company built a loader unit mounted on a Dodge four-wheel drive chassis. This experiment led to something far more significant. In 1949, Pierre Bataille began developing what would become the company's greatest achievement, a fully hydraulic excavator. The machine was unveiled at the Agricultural Machinery Show in October 1951. Called the TU, it was built on a two-wheeled trailer and powered by the towing tractor's power takeoff. It looked crude by modern standards, but it represented a genuine revolution. Unlike cable-operated machines that relied on complex systems of winches and drums, hydraulic excavators used pressurized fluid to power their movements. They were more precise, more powerful relative to their size, and significantly easier to operate. The market responded enthusiastically. More than 1,000 TU units sold before an improved design, the TO, replaced it in 1956. Poclain had also invented the hydraulic clamshell bucket, adding another tool to the contractor's arsenal. By their 10th anniversary in the excavator business, they had sold over 6,500 machines. 1961 marked a turning point. That year, Poclain introduced a machine that would become legendary, the TY-45. This excavator featured something nobody had seen before, a full 360-degree rotating upper structure mounted on a three-wheeled tricycle undercarriage. The design looked strange, almost ungainly, with two small steering wheels at the front. But its performance was anything but awkward. The TY-45 offered unprecedented maneuverability and versatility. Operators could swing the excavating arm in any direction without repositioning the entire machine. On congested job sites and in urban environments, this capability proved invaluable. The numbers tell the story of its success. Over the next 21 years of production, Poclin built approximately 30,000 TY-45 units. The machine was marketed in more than 120 countries. For contractors from France to Florida, from Germany to Hong Kong, the distinctive Poclan silhouette became synonymous with hydraulic excavation itself. That same year, German manufacturer O and K introduced their RH5, their first hydraulic machine. The race was officially on, and Poclan was leading. 
Under Pierre Bataille's leadership, as he succeeded his father as president in 1967, Poquelin embarked on an aggressive expansion strategy. By that year, the company operated 13 subsidiaries, 30 branch offices, and worked with 70 dealers across 80 countries. Employment had grown to 3,740 people, with most working in France. The diversification efforts were remarkable in their ambition. In 1965, Poquelin created PPM, a joint venture with crane manufacturer Potain, to enter the mobile crane market. In 1968, the company established Poclane Hydraulics as a dedicated division for manufacturing hydraulic components. That same year, they acquired the Spanish company TUSA to produce entry-level excavators. Licensing agreements brought Poclan technology to manufacturers in Japan, Argentina, Czechoslovakia, India, and South Korea. Manufacturing subsidiaries opened in Brazil and Mexico. A 1975 partnership with Volvo established production in France and Germany while giving the Swedish company distribution rights for Scandinavia and Austria. Meanwhile, another of Georges Bataille's sons, Claude, was pursuing breakthrough work in hydraulics. In 1958, Claude designed what became known as the G0 motor, a radial piston hydraulic motor that would form the foundation of Poclane's hydraulic component business. The design evolved through successive generations, the G1 in 1962, the G2 in 1972, the G3 in 1979, and the G4 in 1984. These motors weren't just parts for Poclin excavators, they became products in their own right, sold to equipment manufacturers worldwide. By 1973, Poclin had produced over 51,000 excavators since 1951, that year alone, nearly 4,900 machines rolled off assembly lines, with another 1,891 built under license around the world. At its peak, the company employed over 10,000 people and exported to more than 180 countries. In 1970, exactly 20 years after launching their first hydraulic excavator, Poclan unveiled a machine that represented everything the company had learned and everything it aspired to become. The EC-1000 debuted at the Paris Intermat trade show, and it stopped visitors in their tracks. At the time of its introduction, it was the largest fully hydraulic excavator ever built. Nothing else on the market came close. The specifications were staggering. The machine weighed between 142 and 160 tons, depending on configuration. Power came from not one, not two, but three diesel engines, either GM producing a combined 840 horsepower or Deutz units generating approximately 1,000 horsepower total. The EC-1000 could operate as a 10 cubic yard face shovel for loading operations or as a 6.5 cubic yard backhoe for excavation work. The EC-1000 represented Poclan's bold entry into the mining market, where massive cable shovels had previously reigned supreme. For the first time, contractors had a fully hydraulic alternative for heavy production work. The precision and control that hydraulics offered, impossible to achieve with cable machines, could now be applied at previously unimaginable scales. In Britain, two EC-1000s went to work at the St. Aidan's Opencast coal mine, operated by Miller Mining. The site, located in Yorkshire, had been producing coal since deep mining began there in the 1800s. When surface mining expanded around 1981, the massive Poclanes were employed loading overburden onto fleets of Terex rigid dump trucks. The machines were impressive but temperamental. High hydraulic oil temperatures plagued early units, and hoses burst with frustrating regularity under the enormous pressures required. Mechanical failures were commonplace. The EC-1000 was pushing hydraulic technology to its absolute limits. The EC-1000 continued in production until 1975, when Poclan introduced the upgraded 1000 CK model. This improved version addressed many of the original's reliability issues, featuring an elevated cab accessed from the rear, upgraded Cummins KT1150 engines providing better cooling and a higher capacity bull clam bucket. The final 1000 CKB model could handle buckets up to 17 cubic meters, about 22 cubic yards, 
and weighed up to 190 tonnes. Companies like Shand Mining in South Wales ran multiple 1,000 series machines at operations like East Pit and Findaf. But the machines developed a reputation that cut both ways. At the Park Slip Opencast coal site, two 1,000 CK backhoes earned an infamous nickname, the 245s, standing for two booms, four dippers, and five buckets. The name spoke to both their appetite for work and their appetite for replacement parts. The 1000 series remained in production until 1984. It never achieved the commercial success of smaller Poclan models, but it proved something important. Hydraulic technology could compete at any scale. The future belonged to fluid power. The story of Poclan's decline begins, as so many industrial stories do, with oil. The 1973 Arab oil embargo and subsequent energy crisis sent shockwaves through the global economy. Oil prices quadrupled almost overnight. Construction activity collapsed across Western markets. Companies that had expanded aggressively during the boom years suddenly found themselves dangerously overextended. Poclain was especially vulnerable. The company had grown rapidly through the late 1960s and early 1970s, acquiring suppliers and building new factories. They had taken on significant debt to finance this expansion. When the recession hit, revenue plummeted while obligations remained. The French government complicated matters by denying Poclin permission to lay off workers, a decision that may have preserved jobs in the short term but prevented the company from right-sizing its operations. Later, authorities also blocked an attempt to sell shares. By 1976, Poclin was in serious trouble. Pierre Bataille negotiated the only viable solution he could find, American investment. On March 31, 1977, Case, the construction equipment division of Tenneco, acquired a 40% stake in Poclin. In exchange, Case took responsibility for distributing Poclin products in the United States and Canada. The partnership worked for a time. By 1980, Poclan machines were being manufactured in America. But the American name continued increasing its stake. In 1981, Case boosted its ownership. By 1985, they held majority control. By 1987, Case owned 98.7% of Poclan. The Bataille family had lost their company. But Pierre Bataille salvaged one piece. The Hydraulic Components Division, Poclan Hydraulics, was not included in the case deal. On August 13, 1985, Pierre personally purchased this division, spinning it off as an independent company. The hydraulic motors that Claude Bataille had pioneered would remain in family hands. Under case ownership, the Poclan brand gradually disappeared. The company's signature ruby red paint gave way to cases sandy yellow and brown. Models were rebranded as Case Poclane, then simply Case. The distinctive French engineering philosophy merged into a larger American corporate structure. In 1988, the last red Poclane excavator rolled off the assembly line at the crepy en valois factory. Seven years later, in 1995, the historic headquarters at Le Plessis-Belleville closed. The site was converted into a business center named after the company's founder, Espace Georges Bataille. By 1999, the Poclin name had vanished entirely from production machines. Case itself merged with New Holland Construction in 1999 to form CNH, which continues manufacturing excavators today. The Crepy en Valois factory closed permanently in 2003. The Poclin excavator may be gone, but the story isn't over. Poclan Hydraulics, the company Pierre Bataille rescued in 1985, has flourished. Pierre's son, Laurent, succeeded him as president in 2002, representing the third generation of Bataille family leadership. Other family members have joined the company, Jérôme in purchasing, Guillaume in commercial operations. In 2012, Poclan Hydraulics achieved something remarkable. They bought back the Poclan name from CNH Industrial. The name that Georges Bataille borrowed from a flax pond a century ago returned to family control after losing it for 35 years. In 2015, the company officially became Poclain SAS. 
Today, the firm employs over 2,100 people worldwide and generates annual revenues exceeding 500 million euros. They operate 10 production sites and 8 research centers across three continents. Their hydraulic motors power equipment from manufacturers including Caterpillar, John Deere, Renault and Manitou. About 80% of production is exported. The company has embraced new challenges, investing heavily in electrification technology and digital systems. They're working on hydraulic solutions that improve energy efficiency while increasing power output, continuing the innovation tradition that began when Georges Bataille first wondered if there might be a better way. As for the machines themselves, devoted enthusiasts keep the memory alive. The Fondation Poclin, established by former employees, preserves and restores vintage Poclin equipment. A restored TY-45 stands on permanent display near the old factory site in Crépy. Collectors across Europe have saved machines from the scrapyard, breathing new life into mechanical survivors from Poclin's glory days. In Britain, vintage Poclans occasionally surface on farms and in equipment yards. Tired but recognizable monuments to an era when a French family transformed how the world moved Earth. Their distinctive ruby-red color may have faded, but the revolution they started continues in every hydraulic excavator, working on every construction site around the world. The pond is gone now, the flax long forgotten, but the name endures.